this video is about, there we go, this video is about nothing in particular, I just thought I'd just kind of show you around, show you around my, uh, my, my place of living, okay, this is it, that's a quick, a quick tour, all right, okay, so at the moment, there's Jaws, that film's very significant to me, I'll talk about that in a minute, here we have a towel, it's a tea towel, which, um, which is kind of uh, lumpy, there, as you can see there, uh, well, it's not shadowed, and you can also see it's quite badly stained. Lots of sort of greasy, oily stains on there, which has taken me years to uh, to perfect. I even wash this. I do. I wash it very, 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 very infrequently. And um, when I wash it, it hangs um, and dries and looks exactly the same afterwards. You know, obviously these stains are are, are integral now to the to the to the uh, the structure, <laughs> the atomic structure of this tea towel and uh, like that. you see yeah, some some very very nasty stains on there so that's uh, that's wonderful yeah okay that's one of my tea towels I have another one which I don't know where it is oh that one's here which is also very badly stained um, and there's uh, the shadow of the camera there this is where I keep the shadow of my camera on the stained tea towel there um, but it, it moves around, you know, sometimes I put it in different places, like over here. Yeah, sometimes I have it on the wall there, like that. Uh, that's a really great place to keep it. For some reason, I've got this pair of trousers uh, on, the, on the chair there, like that. Underneath the trousers is a duvet, a single duvet. So, so this, as you may have gathered, is, my, is a bed sit. That's the kitchen area. It's one room that I live in. I'll just give you a, a little bit of a... Look around there. One room that I live in, um, and do you know what? I kind of like it. Um, I, I've had to, I've done my best to declutter, but as you can see, yeah, there's a bit of a mess at the moment uh, because uh, because mess is something that happens when you're a human being, of course. Um, any human being that exists who doesn't create mess is probably an alien or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not saying there are. The, the tidy people are aliens. I'm just saying that uh, you do create mess, but tidy people tidy it up, whereas um, creative people don't. Uh, well, that's 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 the uh, that's the conjecture of creative people, anyway. So, um, what else can we look at? This is my bike. Ah, now that's my dinner. It's just gone ping. So maybe I should conclude this tour at a later stage. Let's see. See how my sausages are doing, shall we? Let's pull them out here. Oh, they look, they look, oh, they look burned on one end and barely cooked on the other, just as sausages should be. Perfect. Perfect. Because who wants, who wants equality? Who wants some um, consistency in their food? I certainly don't. No, no, I want, I want variety. Each sausage could, should contain a variety of being burned on one side and then dangerously undercooked on the other. I think that's the perfect sausage. The perfect sausage. Uh, and I have just, I now have four perfect sausages. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this off for a bit now. Have some food, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll go to we'll 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 talk about this and that. And the, I'm just realizing I'm pointing at things, but the camera's got my face, so you can't see what I'm pointing at. That and that over there, and those in the ceiling. Yeah, this is where I live now. Let's 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 look over here. That's my Hoover. Um, that's some that's a chair with clothes on, which every self self propelled bachelor has um this is my bag this is my rucksack which recently the the, the it's got two it's got two compartments and one of them the zip just completely failed it's completely come off so now i have to kind of tie it down and use the second compartment yeah it's a bit of a wreck it's a bit of a it's a bit of a hatchet job no it's a bit of a rig a rigged job which most of the things i own end up being some kind of rig job there's board games up there that I play with the kids. The Jaws poster we'll talk about that in a bit. And then, ow, that's a table that I just walked into and hurt my leg and uh, knocked something off. What did I knock off? It's Holly's hairbrush. Knocked Holly's hairbrush onto the floor. That's Holly's hairbrush. And if you look closely, you'll see some of Holly's hair. Um, my phone's telling me something. Why, why is it doing that? You know, I'm filming a video and it suddenly flashes up on the screen. Galaxy Store has nothing interesting to tell you. That's uh, perfect. That's that's great. You know, just interrupt my flow. There. That's that's fabulous. And uh, and if you look here, there's all sorts of clothes up there. There's a wedding dress. You see, there's a surgeon's outfit. There's a sort of a, just a suit there. 
that's a kind of a combat dress type thing. Um, that's the head of a crocodile costume, uh, which we used in um, Man in a Monster Suit. So these are all costumes that I've collected over the years and which I've uh, not thrown away. Uh, it's, it's some of the only real clutter that I, that I keep here. Uh, that's a, a light with a hat on and there's more costumes over there. Uh, let's have a look here. This is my bed. Currently my bed has on it a DVD of Legally Blonde, which is a show that I filmed for a customer. That's the food, the sausages that I just told you about, sausages and some beans. That's the leftover sauce and the fork and the knife that I used. Some wine gums. I think there's about two left in there. Maltesers. Uh, similarly, I think there's two left in there as well. This is my electricity point. I have to pay electricity on a meter. Every every flat in this building has electricity on a meter. And that's a, that's a very lovely thing. Oh, I just farted. That's a very uh, lovely, lovely thing that makes me feel like I'm at home. Or oh, oh, actually makes me feel kind of sick. <laughs> home is where the heart is. Home is where the fart is, according to what I just did this then. That's a big box of wires. Any videographer, any techie guy, anybody, anybody worth his salt who does anything to do with computers or technology or cables or anything like that should always, always own a big box of cables like that. Preferably un, unmanageably tangled. Uh, some posters there. There's another Jaws poster, Back to the Future. Uh, I think that's Empire Strikes Back. Uh, that's a shark surfboard. It's kind of tempting fate, I suppose, if you ask me, if you believe in that sort of thing, which I don't. Um, I don't think fate can be tempted. It's very stubborn. This is, oh, I want to show you this. I want to show you this, this brilliant thing that this printer does. It's absolutely amazing. Me and technology, you know, we're like that. We are, we're like that. We just get on so well. Right, I'm going to show you. This is a blank disc. I'm currently, um, I've burned the, the show onto this disc. Uh, it's a DVD. Uh, and I'm now going to print the disc. Um, the printer is making noises for no reason at all. Just because I took this out, it's now going, woo, 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 woo. All right, okay. Now, this goes in here. You push it up up to the level there, the level line, as you can see there. So that means it's ready to print. That is the position you are told to put it in by the instructions. Sometimes I think I'd do better in life like this. <laughs> so, yes, I've put the black blank disc in there, which I'm going to... Oh, is it going to make a noise? See, it didn't make a noise this time. Last time I pulled this out, it complained. And this time it's like, no, no, I'm changing my mind. I'm doing something different. Inconsistency, that's the problem. Now, now this is interesting. You, you click print and it comes up with all these options. You know, there's a print there. You can change the tray position, uh, adjust, adjust print position like that. Uh, you can just, you just make it lighter or darker and stuff. Number of copies, zero. Oh, yes, because that's the most likely, that's the default setting there, zero. Because that, that's the most likely number of copies I'm going to want when I press print, isn't it? I'm going to press the print button just so I can tell the computer that I want zero copies printing. So uh, obviously now I always move that up to one. And now weirdly, that's gone to, t oh, I can't see now. God, why can't I see? There, it's gone to two. You click the up button from zero to two. Maybe the zero is actually one, but for some reason it's showing zero. I bet if I print it with zero, it would actually print one. Uh, anyway, so then I have to put it back down to one. So we're on one. Okay, now remember, this is in position. Up to the line is, is where you're supposed to push it, and that means it's ready to print. Okay, and then I click print, and then it says, it'll pop up a thing saying, uh, the printer, the, the, the inner diameter is set to less than foot. Yeah, shut up. It always says that, it's just a little warning. It doesn't actually mean, right, so now watch the printer. It spits it out. It spits it out, which is fine, because you think, well, it knows what it's doing. It knows what it's doing. But then you look to the screen, and what does it do? What happens next? Close the output tray if it is opened. Load the CD tray and press the load button. What it's done there is it spat the tray out of its own accord. And then it's complaining about the fact that the tray isn't in the correct position. Oh my God. And it does this every time. So then I push it back in. 
press the button there. That's that, that button indicates, that light indicates that it wasn't in its correct position. Press that and then it, it spits it out a little bit again. Oh, but this time it'll suck it back in, suck it back in, suck it back in. Yeah, yeah, and then it starts to print. Why? Why does it do that? Do you know the weird thing is that my previous printer did the same thing. It didn't do it when I first got it, but it's something it developed over years because my previous printer, I had it for like 10 years. It lasted for ages and then finally it just kind of gave up and it spat out all its ink and it was just a, a nightmare mess. So I got this brand new printer uh, and it was doing it too. Oh, or maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's my computer. Maybe it's my computer, you know, because that was quite old at the time as well. But now my computer's died. Um, and, I've, and I've replaced that with a new system, a new PC. Um, installed this printer into that PC, and it still does it. So it's like different printers and different systems, the same glitch. And like I say, weirdly, it wasn't a glitch that was always there. It's one that the old printer developed, and this one seems to have sort of inherited from its previous owner, from its predecessor. So what... Where's the logic in that? What is that? I was going to tell you about Jaws. Very briefly, Jaws, my Jaws poster there, I'm into movies, I make movies, and Jaws was the film that made me want to make movies. That's it there. That's the long story. I saw Jaws when I was a kid. It terrified me at first, and then I became fascinated with it. And one summer, every day when I was off school, every morning I would watch the film and study it. Not not, not consciously study it, but uh, I would watch it. I just think I just wanted to know how these things worked. How, how could such a great piece of art be made... And how can I reproduce that? So anyway, yeah, so that's what made me want to be a filmmaker. And I think you'll find a lot of filmmakers um, were similarly inspired by this film. Uh, and that's why Spielberg's my favourite director. Because, firstly, because, you know, any independent filmmaker in the world is supposed to, you know, you're supposed to like Guillermo del Toro or, or, or you know... Um, I don't know, Dexter Fletcher or someone, someone more obscure, you know, someone who does difficult things, or Terry Gilliam, someone who's kind of cool and a bit mainstream, but also, you know, a bit independent-y. Those are the people you're supposed to admire when you're an independent filmmaker. You're not supposed to admire Steven Spielberg. So, so I do. Ha! Can you tell what it is yet? Oh, don't say that. Can you tell me what the film is? Do you know what it is? You recognise her? That's uh, That scaly thing there is a dinosaur. Um, and we're in Spielberg territory, actually. I think this was uh, exact produced by, by Spielberg, directed by Trevor, Trevor, Tremorrow Tr Tr or something like that. I have, oh, shoot, oh, Victor Tremorrow. No, Tr Tr I don't know. The, 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 the day after Tremorrow, I don't know. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's Jurassic World, uh, the second one, Fallen Kingdom. Um, I tend to have, I have loads of films. I, I, I buy DVDs and I rip them and I put them in a massive database on a hard drive. And I just kind of click random and, and, and watch random films. Usually watch two or three films a day. While I'm working, I don't just sit and watch films. Uh, it's while I'm editing and, and printing things and, you know, and working on stuff. There's some old boots there. Don't know why I haven't thrown them out. I wish I could think of a brilliant and amusing way to end this video. But I can't. <laughs>